If we did the Eminem album, you'd be like, where's the Brock Hampton? If we did the Brock Hampton, you'd be like, where's the Eminem? So fuck it, we're doing it both. It's the Going Off Podcast with Rap Critic and Muse and a very special guest. Yo, we got Kill Bill in the motherfucking Kill Building, bitch. Yo. Yeah, that's right. Actually, I'm going by Kuji Santana with the Gucci bandana from now on, yo. You keep switching up so fucking fast. We can't, we can't keep track of this shit. I know. No one can. I, I like to keep the jakes off my tail. <laughs> <laughs> so, Kuji Santana with the Gucci bandana featuring A Boogie with the hoodie and Soldier Boy Tell him and all the full sentence rappers. <laughs> my shit's going to be a paragraph soon, yo. <laughs> Gonna be like that fucking uh, Fiona Apple album. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. God sent the king to destroy the, the pawns, but the pawn is actually the king, if you really think about it, with da 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 you know. Yeah, it has to have parentheses at the end. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. No, enough of the bullshit. Enough of the bullshit. Let, enough of the bu- let's cut right into it. Hold on a sec. Hold on a sec. Wait, no, but I, I just said let's get right into it. You can't. He just contradicted. I was feeling a little trouble in paradise in here, y'all. It's like, he's saying one thing, he's saying another thing. The fuck is going on, Muse? Fucking, god damn it! I just noticed that a mysterious person, a mysterious hooded stranger, just wandered into our call. Jolly good, sir, jolly good. Oh, oh my shit. god. Oh, oh, no! Oh, shit, boy. Boo, 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 boo. <laughs> boo, 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 boo. Oh, no, shit. No, I didn't even know he was about to be in here. Heard you was talking shit. Oh, shit. I feel like a wrestling heel. <laughs> Fucking rap in the house. It's all happening right now. That's right. That's right. Yo. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Today, fellas. <laughs> Hey, yo, check me out, dog. I'm keep going. Hey, yo, this is for the kids back home. Hey, hey, uh. we don't need a glass of water, fucking rap. <laughs> the haters will say that was written, but I, I tell you what, bro, I, I, this, that's just straight from the top. Dog, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. That shit was contrived. Whoa, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I got, I got some, I got some fire for both y'all asses. Anything y'all can do, I can also do, but I can do it better. What? Oh, shit. What? Detroit, what? Your observation is erroneous. Oh. All right. That's right. All right. That's right. How you gonna come at the referee? When, since when does the referee get involved? Since when did the referee reach over to Cannabis and snatch his fucking notebook and say, <laughs> get that shit out of here? Hey, yo, rap critic? More like crab critic, am I right? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. Ha-ha. <laughs> Got to them. <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yo, yeah. Rav, I would call you have, but it's more like had. <laughs> Yo, Rav, I got some I got some bars for your ass, dog. Are you don't ready get for involved. It? Dog, I'm about to dude, I don't think that this is time for the actual the actual factual battle, but I think I'm just gonna do like a four bar little clip for you. You ready? Ooh, okay. Little taste. Yo, Rav. Sucks. Your breath smell like John Cena's nipples after WrestleMania twenty one. Oh! And I don't oh! get it. I done offered you plenty gum. Dog, your titties, your titties so long. Oh. I swear up and down you use them to bungee jump. And let's you not forget about, about your areolas. No homo, but them shits dummy plump. Oh, oh he said his areolas was plump. Oh, no. Been next, time, them next, time, next time, next time, next time, next time, next time, next time. Yo, make sure my mic is loud and my production is right. I, I thought we talked about not talking about my long titties. Like we, I thought, like it's in the contract. Like uh, low blow, bro. Come on. Rules are made to be broken. You know who said that? Shang Tsung. This is just a little taste, everybody. This is just a glimpse. If you think we're giving away the fucking pay per view shit for free, you're mistaken. This is just talk your shit. 
This is just a fucking little sample, a little taste of the sweet, sweet fire that will be brought to you on this stage, the grandest stage of them all, the only show in town, the only podcast they've been bumping in the streets, the Going <gasps> Off Podcast with Rap Critic and Muse, Kill Bill, Rav, one time, one time only, once in a lifetime. Yo, you, yo, you, call, you used to call us going off, but now you're going to call us going upside your motherfucking head. I'm going to pee in your butt, Bill. You better watch your mouth. No! Oh, oh, the disrespect. The, di- That's right. the disgracefulness. I'm going to fucking lasso you with my long titty, bro. <laughs> He's going to make you regret you ever brought that shit up. That shit was off limits. <laughs> yeah, you're right, man. I'm sorry, man, but it had to be said. You know, it's just a battle, dog. It's a battle, and this real hip hop thing, real mm. hip hop, man, real hip hop. It was a battle, respect, but no respect. It's a battle, man. You know what I'm saying? Real hip hop for the streets, yeah. 1994. And then, and then we have to have like a like the post battle interview where I'm like, yeah, I mean that was crazy. I can't believe he brought up my long titties. Like I, I, I thought he would, but. But at the same time, like, the way he fucking flipped that shit, I mean, fuck, you know, like, and I mean, all in all, just what a great battle for, 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 for the culture, the culture man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, bro. Don't My interrupt favorite thing me, in I... rap battles, the thing at the end is, like, they'll be, like, just bringing up, like, mad personal shit, and then they act, like, because, you know, it is kind of like a level of respect or whatever, right? But at the end of it, he'll be like, I can't believe he brought up the time that I beat and killed my wife and kids. <laughs> but, I mean, at the end of the day, it's all love, you know, I respect him at the end of the day at the end of the day <laughs> yeah i love it because they always do the clapping thing and kind of pacing back and like smiling like yeah yo what are you talking about me killing my daughter that shit was fucking i was like bro how did you come up with that shit i mean like i did that shit but like man <laughs> fuck, that's crazy he's like getting handcuffed like because <laughs> <laughs> he just admitted to like <laughs> that off stage. You got me. That was a good one. I'm gonna get you next time. <laughs> At about five to ten. This week on the Going Off podcast, we are doing a double review because this past Friday, Eminem revival, Brockhampton saturation oh, three. No! We're gonna do them both because we don't want to choose which one we're gonna do first. If you gotta ask me personally. I'd say we're going to have to leave Eminem as the main event, the thing that people are going to be waiting for. we got to bring it mm. the Brockhampton mm. Saturation 3, mm. the second Saturation album we've reviewed on this podcast this year. I hate that we didn't review the first one, that we'd have the triple threat. That's how behind we are. I didn't even know who the fuck they were when the first one came out. Yeah, I knew who, like, I knew who, like, three of them were, but, like, like I knew who Dom was, Dom McLennan was, because he did, he made that beat for Rav. Oh. And like a oh, long shit, time, really? like a long time ago, like 2010 or something. Ooh. And it's that abandoned one. It was the first one that, for I think the first collab we released like on SoundCloud together. Oh, and wow. then so I knew who he was, but I didn't really know anything about his music. And I knew Kevin Abstract just like from the internet. And then I think Amir maybe I'd heard before, you know. But then I I didn't even know. I thought it was one dude at first. Yeah, us too. We were like, I thought Brock Hampton was one guy. We saw one guy on the fucking album cover. And then it was like, while I was listening to the album, I was like, wait, is he like slipping into an African accent every now and then? What the fuck is going on? (laughs) Yeah, you know, all right. Well, actually, let's get into it. Let's get into it. So, Boogie, that was quite possibly the best thing on this entire album. And unfortunately, not indicative of where the album would go for me. There was something about that groove that was just like alternate universe, late disco, sort of weird, like, like funk. Because it had like the, that wheeling guitar, uh, 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 saxophone in it. That was just, <laughs> it was just, it was just crazy. I was, like, I was like, I could listen to this forever. Like I was, the first disappointment I had on this album was this track ending. Like I was just like, what? Why would you not have that going forever? Like, <laughs> just have that going for the entirety of it, just on loop for like 70 minutes. I gotta say though, I really like uh, the fact that they do this a lot, I feel like, but like that is a perfect example of it. Like um, they're very good at doing something very different, but it still slaps and you can play it like I could play that at a party and no one would be like, wow, this is a weird song. Like everyone would just dance to it. You know what I mean? But it's definitely like a weird fucking song. I'm going to piggyback on what Darren said about disappointments. My disappointment here, where's follow. There was a, there was a song that was out. The music video was already out by the time we reviewed saturation two. And it wasn't on that album. 
and I was talking it up, and you were like, no, 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 that's not on this album, that's on the next one. And it's not on this one either. It's not even on Spotify at all. There's just a music video on YouTube, and all the comments are, where the fuck is it? In the beginning of the music video even says, this is from Saturation 3, and it's just not there. Yeah, and you know, like, you can tell by the way it's lettered, too, because it has six letters in it. So, like, like you know it was made for three. But I guess they cut it. But, I mean, I like that song. What if it I was a mistake? Song. Like, it, it, like, they legitimately made it to be included, but they fucked up. And they're just like, oh, shit. Uh, let's just act like we meant to do it. <laughs> yeah. I feel like it was just, like, something that they did just to get people hyped up for Saturation 3 and then realize, yeah. like, hey, this doesn't really fit with the context of the record or something. I think it would have, but, you know. It was more of a personal record. And maybe a song just like, you know, the the boys want to follow, the boys want to follow. Maybe it was like too light for the album because the album was kind of a, a bit more serious in tone. Yeah, that's that's what I was actually about to say. Like, I was uh, I, I was like, yo, your boy's gone soft. Your boy's gone soft. Like, what happened? I don't know about that. What happened? In my personal opinion, Brockhampton are running the same playbook that run the jewels did in the sense that two was better than one and three is better than two i think brockhampton saturation three is the best of the saturation trilogy if you were to ask me personally i think it's the most put together i think it is it it seems like they learned a bit from the last one like this seems like a much more cohesive it's just well-rounded i think all the tracks are solid in the way that um the way that they're produced and the, like every track has like four or more people on it like the thing i hate about a lot of the most recent wu-tang projects is that it's only like two fucking people on it and that's it here you get like a mini verse from like six people and what i th- what i liked about that was like you might have one guy and he has a verse where it's like some positive shit and then another guy will just come in and he'll just be like oh yeah well i'm having a really shitty day and it's like oh, okay <laughs> like what's going on with you i actually do like how like sometimes they would finish the rhymes of the previous verse so it's like oh, they yeah. almost finished the lyric and then the other guy finished it for them but it, it, moving to a different topic but i will say like i don't know man i didn't feel the same lyrical energy i didn't feel like i understand maybe they were taking it to a different place but i didn't feel like it was up to snuff i especially feel like a lot of the rhymes were just fucking not there like there were a lot of times where it was just like motherfucker that didn't rhyme at all like on bleach he's like i can't make this up i can't take it back i feel like a monster feel like a deadhead zombie and then at the tail end, starting on the next line, feeling like you don't want me. And it's just like, well, like, the rhyme felt like a fucking, like, oh, shit, right, I need to rhyme it. Uh, don't want me. You know what I mean? Or, like, fucking prick up, listen up. If you want to get rich, no sleep. How real bad men wake up. That didn't rhyme at all. Like, there were so many places where it was just like, do you just want to do, like, a spoken word thing? Because you can't do that. Like, you don't have to, like make it seem like you're about to rap and then just for my money like if you're writing a song and it's like you got a whole bunch of people on here and you're rapping like why would you specifically write lyrics where you're like this specifically like there's no way you don't hear that this specifically doesn't rhyme this isn't like a hard rhyme and almost oh i'm playing with the syllable like this actually doesn't rhyme and it's weird to me because i would i would personally feel like if i'm on like a track with a whole bunch of people like it's like the Wu-Tang thing. Like, you're trying to be the best one. And it feels like here, it's like, there's absolutely no sense of... And I'm not saying everybody needs to be, like, beefing with each other, but there needs to be some sense of, like, oh, my God, that guy was so good. Oh, no, but wait, what about what, this guy saying this? Oh, but wait, that guy was saying this. Like, I didn't get that feeling at all. I didn't get any feeling that someone was trying to give me more depth than the other person, that someone was trying to give me more lyricism than the other person, that someone was trying to give me something more clever than the other person. I felt like a lot of times it was just, like, like, there are a lot of songs with mini verses, and I, I actually didn't like that. I, I like it better when it's like someone gives me a full at least eight bars and then give it to the other person. A lot of times it's like when you give me so little, it's just like unless there's something that they're working together on to bring you a co- cohesive picture of, it just feels like 
you guys just came in and threw in your verses and you didn't care how it sounded together. Fuck it, let the sound engineer mix them together. So much felt like unpieced together that it was just like, man, this is hard to enjoy. And that really sucked because I remember really enjoying their last one. And, you know, of course, you, you know, you're like, oh, man, I know I'm in for a good time now. And then it's just like, hmm. Okay, um, and you know, you get to stains, and there's literally a part where it's like, oh man, y'all motherfuckers made three hours still talking about the same shit. One gay, one selling drugs, one trying to act like Lil Wayne, and I didn't get that from anybody. I don't know where that came from, but, you know, but it was, you know, it was basically just going like, oh man, y'all motherfuckers doing the same old shit, blah, 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 da, 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 and it's just like, I've always found it funny when, because that happens sometimes in albums where someone goes like, oh, you're just doing this. Now, usually what follows that is, Let's prove you wrong. But the thing is, this is track 13 out of 15. And we are I've already been thinking, man, they do kind of sound like, you know, we're just doing the same shit. And then you just pointed it out. And this is like, well, now that's making me be even more critical. Because <laughs> it's like, yeah, what the fuck is going on right now? Like, you know, I, I feel like if you do too many projects too soon, I feel like it's it, it shows like I, there's not enough time for any growth to happen. And I feel like that kind of got showcased here. I feel like the difference with Brock Hampton versus like a, a, the average rap group is that like with the, a normal rap group, emphasis is still on individuality, like in, in the individual, right? What does this person's verse sound like? What does that person's verse sound like? Whereas like with them, I feel like their mindset isn't to like outdo each other, but to like compliment each other. Like that's kind of like the way, then I'm not saying, I'm not saying that you're, you're invalid and in say what you're saying. Cause I agree with you on certain aspects of the record. You know what I'm saying? But what I'm getting at is like, I feel like a lot of times that competition isn't there with them. It's more about just like doing some shit that they think, think sounds cool. And like, even down to what you were saying about like the, the rhymes, like uh, about how like <clears throat> certain parts didn't rhyme or they had kind of weird like rhyme structures and like it felt rushed or whatever. Like, uh, I don't know, man. Like sometimes I just be listening to Brock Hampton and I can like, just like kind of zone out and be like, wow, this sounds tight. Like, that's kind of what I did with the record. To be honest with you, I didn't sit down and, like, break down their bars like that. Because I don't really do that when I listen to Brock Hampton. So I'm probably the worst person to ask to be on here right now that I think about it. But, but I was going to say to your point. Like, I was going to say to your point. You know, like, you could say, like, all right, yeah, there's a way that a group could work. It could either be they're zigzagging because one style's over here, one style's over there. Or it could be doing what this album uh, feels like it's going for and the sort of all of these people working together. But honestly... I didn't feel like that worked either because like on earlier tracks, I felt like it worked where they were finishing each other's rhymes and stuff like that. I wanted to hear more of that cohesiveness if that's where they're going with it. But I felt like there wasn't like, I felt like no one was like, what's your verse about? How can I play off of that? You know what I mean? After a while, I did not feel like there was that direct connection. If they're going to be that, you know, braided together, you know what I mean? Um, except for on Sister Nation. On Sister Nation, I felt like that really worked. When I was listening to this the first time, you know, I was just listening to it casually. You know, second time I listened to it, I listened to it with Genius open, and I was reading the lyrics, and I was able to get more of a con uh, concept of what they were talking about. I personally, and I don't know if I've ever said this on the show before, but I'm going to say this now. I'm going to set the record straight. I don't give a fuck if you're rhyming or not. If you're a rapper, you should know how to rhyme, right? I feel like that's the thing, but I think that obviously they've all showcased the ability to rhyme well on the last tracks and stuff like that. And if they wanted to do some experimentation and do something really weird with their bars, whether it works or not, like, I don't think that it's like necessarily invalid or I think a lot of times it did. Sometimes it didn't for me. You know what I mean? But like, like I like bleach. Like I like the way bleach sounds. That's my probably my favorite one on the record. Right. And like, just there is some like a lot of it where it's just like wow there's a whole like couplet there that there was not a rhyme there but i think it sounds cool and like what he's saying was interesting you know what i mean uh, yeah i feel i feel like if you're gonna do that there should be a purpose to it where it's like you know i you thought there was gonna be a rhyme there but there isn't because you know i'm doing something specifically about bucking your expectations like it's the difference between setting up something and subverting it and just not like, there's a difference between, you. I know you're expecting this, and I didn't do it, and I'm just lazy, and that just doesn't rhyme. I, I think it's all about the intent and the context, right? Like, 
again, if we want to compare it to, I'm just going to have our blanket example be Wu-Tang here just because it was the first thing that came to mind, right? If you got them and you're talking about stuff and they're rhyming about stuff and they're talking about what, like, I'm going to chop your fucking head off and then I'm going to do this and then I'm going to do this and I'm going to go over here and I'm going to do this. And they're not really going to do that shit, you know? Like, that's just shit they're talking about for fun, right? How do you know? <laughs> <laughs> this album, and you can tell with Brockhampton and honestly just a bunch of the indie rappers, right? Like, this is more about self-expression okay, I, and what they've got going on and less you. about... I, I, like, I'm not trying to paint this picture of all this crazy shit because then, yeah, you might actually want to take the time to rhyme because it's not... It doesn't have a personal attachment to you. But if you're going into the thing and you're recording the thing and you just want to fucking get some shit off your chest, you know, r- rhyming might not exactly be, you know, one of your top priorities. It's basically you, like the, the argument of style versus substance. Like, Big L is all about style. The rhymes connect all the time. They always rhyme perfectly the way they're supposed to. But what he's actually talking about is just some bullshit most of the time. Like, he's just talking about being better than you and how he's going to kill you and shit. And this is basically the complete opposite side of the spectrum. It's not really about what the style is. It's just, I want to present this reality to you, is basically what you're saying. I'm, j- I'm just going to say this, and I don't want to skip ahead too much. Mm-hmm. Eminem rhymed a shit ton of his album, and I fucking hated that album. So that doesn't mean shit to me. Oh, wow. Okay, well, we're going to get back to that. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, this is gonna be fun. It's actually fascinating how this is unfolding as two reviews. I did not think that they would be sort of companion pieces, but I, I guess they are in a way. Well, but we'll see. Well, when you think about it, oh, okay. Well, I, I don't want to just skip the Brockhampton <laughs> thing, but I just want to give my two cents. When you, th- in my opinion, in my opinion, they're kind of two sides of a spectrum, right? And the M and M is like it's all about the technical aspect of it, and uh, it's really like 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 it's more almost like a by the book how you're supposed to rap. You know, like well, if you look at it, like you know, or I'm not saying by the book, but you know what I'm saying. Like, yeah, it has like yeah, a, yeah. I, I feel the general idea. Yeah, traditional. The traditionalist rap fan would. I'm not saying they're gonna like that record, but if you saw those lyrics on paper and you're a traditionalist rap fan, you were more likely to like that than. Uh, you know, diarrhea puns aside, then <laughs> from from the uh, 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 Brockhampton one, where if you read it and he's just like, "Wow, I don't know what's happening here," like rhyme scheme wise and stuff yeah. like that. But you then you hear I mean? the but music anyway, with yeah. it, and you're like, "Oh, okay, it's not as important that they rhyme." That is that is my personal opinion, and you can quote that. Oh shit, we're coming down to it. See, this is the motherfucking going off podcast. It ain't. It's not your dad's podcast. <laughs> this ain't your daddy's podcast. <laughs> this God. is your weird uncle's podcast. <laughs> <laughs> with, with this, right? Another thing, I'm gonna compare it because why not? Now, now that it's fucking back and forth, I remember you mentioned on our review of uh, Saturation Two, Darren, mm-hmm. that um. You were not a fan of this thing Kevin Ab- Abstract did, which he did a lot on this album, too. I actually is that... liked it a lot better. His, his... You liked it on this one? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so w- what we're talking about here is the pitch-corrected uh, kind of like verse or chorus that it's him, but it doesn't sound like him. So it's almost like an additional person I, I, doing yeah. the thing. I felt like there were... I'm, oh, I'm, okay. Go on. I was just going to say, I would much rather... Kevin Abstract pitch his voice and quote like do the singing chorus then Eminem actually try to sing his own choruses <laughs> well okay that's been right, a thing right, right. let's let's just say right I know. now Kevin Abstract is a better singer than Eminem is I think I think we could all agree okay, to that okay yeah I think we could all agree <laughs> to that you know, yeah. but, uh, well, I think Kevin Abstract's a pretty good singer when he's not pitch corrected, like like on the yeah, old. Yeah, exactly. like, what is it? Like, it, it, yeah. Now, like it, I felt like on this track, it was a, it, on this album, it was toned down a little bit more, and there were a lot of times where it felt like he was singing, but also like the higher pitch was there, but also the normal pitch was there. So it's just like, oh, he's you know a little, yeah. doing a little oc- octave harmonizing with himself. You know what I'm it's saying? It's a little less grading. Yeah, a little less yeah. Less grading yeah. on this record. 
Um, I kind of like it when it's grading, though. Is that weird? Like, I kind of like that almost <laughs> annoying. I mean, I don't know, man. Danny Brown's in my top five. You know <laughs> yeah, what I'm saying? I, like, I was I'm just used to say, it. I'm with the yeah. shits. I do want to say that uh, this is probably my least favorite of their projects. Like, and I'm not, I'm saying that, I'm saying that with like, okay, I've, I've just admittedly, I've listened to it like three times casually. Like I haven't really like dug down deep into it, but like, like in terms of, uh, like when I say it's at least favorite, that isn't sliding it. I still really enjoy it, you know, but it's just like, there's a lot of the, I don't think they've stuck with me yet. A lot of the songs like haven't really like stuck with me like the other ones. Yeah. You know, like this like as soon as I heard la di da di da di da na 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 like on on two, I was like, Well, I like this song a lot. This is my shit right now, you know what I'm saying? Or whatever. You know, and like this one I feel like it's like taking a little bit longer. But I don't know, there's been records like that that I've had I've like not really enjoyed just right off rip and or as much right off rip and then I end up liking them more but that's just the way I process music so if we got to review both albums we got to make some time here so across the board Darren what would you give this album out of five uh three out of five actually I'd give it a uh four out of five Mm. I would also give it a four Mm, look at that revival by Eminem some calling it his worst album ever and I say that so one person on the show said worst album get, ever. No, get that shit. Get that fucking hot take bullshit the fuck out of my face. Hot take. I want your ass to go back. Let right motherfucking now. Stop this motherfucking podcast. Go back and listen to goddamn uh, uh fucking big weenie. Go back and listen to motherfucking. Wait, hold on a second. I I I, I want to say fact and that fucking. Wee Wee song, but those technically weren't on the album, but they were still around that motherfucking time. I want you to go back, listen to those fucking songs, and get that shit the fuck out of my goddamn face. I don't want to hear nobody saying that. Ooh, where's it? No. I'm going to say something, man. Don't I'm going to say something. Don't you dare. Encore is a better record than this record. <laughs> This no. shit was. This shit oh, was. Uh, this is the worst record of 2017, dog. Right, this is the I worst record bullshit. I've ever heard in my bullshit. life. This is. We're gonna not fight. We're gonna fight. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. I, I want you. This was supposed to be my first single, but I just fucked up that. So they get on. Come on, let's be good. Doug, if I have to sit through another pop s- pop singer, if I have to sit through another pop Yo. singer slash Eminem song one more time, Doug, Doug, I would much rather listen to Eminem having his fucking drug breakdown that's the worst thing in the world <laughs> than listen to this. I'd rather listen to the worst thing that Eminem could possibly do, right? Than this, if that makes any sense. Like, this is a new low to me, man. This is... What you're saying is you would take... Bad over boring is what you're saying. No, I would say I would take bad over bad and boring. <sighs> Man, I really dude, am not dude, feeling... dude. No, there's so many. At least the lyrical content on Encore, although it was the worst, it was bad. It was. I'm not. I'm not trying. We're comparing shit and shit. Okay, but. Dude, 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 dude. He says, the dude says, fucking, I have an air about me like wind chimes. This dude that says, dude, the dude says, I had to meet. You it's dad jokes. It's, it's dad first. jokes. <laughs> then he said, and then he said, fucking, uh, that he said, I had to meet her like taxi cabs. Dog, put the fucking gun <laughs> in your face, hold dog. On, hold uh, on. Like, like, <laughs> What else could I possibly do to make noise? I done touched on everything. <laughs> but little boys. Oh, ha, ha. it's hilarious. That, that line is way better Fuck than no. I had to meet her like taxi cab. It's an awful line, okay? Uh. Like, that's a one. That's a one. Taxi cab. Meet her like taxi cab is negative four. <laughs> We're going to get to that one in a second. We're going to get to that one in a second. Because... Can we just all can we us all agree? Can we all just agree? No matter how much degree we dislike this record, Doug, like can we all just agree that this is an awful fucking record? No, we just like no, no. What? Wrong. What? Wrong. You're saying this is an uh, this is not an awful record? Okay, first of all, first of all, first of all, encore is filled with so much shit. That I don't want to fucking hear that gets repeated over and fucking over and fucking over and fucking no, over fuck again. No, fuck Encore, though. Fuck Encore all the way. Like, who gives no, no, a fuck? No, 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 no. Who gives a fuck about out of this fucking, We are not ending this review with motherfuckers on my goddamn show saying that Encore, that anything, 
that was on Encore is better than anything on any other fucking album ever. Okay, let me just hit you with another fucking another fucking opinion of mine that might fuck you up, man. I think Encore is better than Recovery. Ah! Get that shit Recovery is ass water, dog. (laughs) All that shit is anything that starts with an R by Eminem is bad. I am okay. Are you serious right now? This really must be a thing of like, dude. I hate Encore. I hate. I hate Encore. But I fucking. Are you serious? It's dude. I can't fucking I can't wow. fucking stomach it. It's so cheesy I and sonically no bad, legs, dude. Or no brain, nice to meet you. Hi, really? You would really listen to that again? Oh, oh, let me. See. Dude, I won't listen to that. I won't listen to that again. But if I had gun to my head, the dude's like, listen, man, listen, man. I'm a really weird serial killer, and the <laughs> only way to get out of this is to either listen to recovery or encore. No. I would look at him and I'd be like, I'd be like, listen, man. I don't want to do either of those things. But recovery makes me want to yak, and 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 revival definitely makes me want to yak. Like that's like. I feel the, like I'm taking fucking crazy pills. Are you serious right now? Dude, I don't I don't see how you could listen to Revival and hear except for maybe one song that has any redeemable qualities. Like I don't see anything okay, good in all right, it. Like, let, I, let me explain. I, I physically it makes okay, me want okay. to throw up. Speaking of the dad puns, I thought those were going to be a lot bigger thing than they ended up actually being. They were on of uh, maybe okay, all right, actually if we're going to get into it. Uh so Walk on Water I actually ended up liking more than I thought I would. Uh, it it works it works as an intro in a way because it's it's basically it actually it works in companion with the next song because the first song is him saying I feel like I don't have anything left but I'm trying to make something and then the next song was him saying motherfucker if you believe in me I'm gonna keep doing this shit basically the reason why I like this album on leaps and bounds above the ones that you've mentioned is because it has a lot more ambition going for it. Uh, This song was, oddly enough, doing... It it was technically like a diss track to, like, like trap rappers, but without really saying anything to them. Because it was just like, I'm going to do that flow that you guys do, and I'm going to show you how to do it with skill. Like, but it was like, he wasn't specifically saying that. That was just how it sort of came out. Because it's like, when you li- listen to it, you're like, okay, he's obviously aping these sort of flows. But he's doing it with a lot more fucking skill to it. But there's like a kajillion other people that do that that are way better than him at doing it. And I don't understand why. Because like, dude, there's parts. Dog, dog, I'm not, I can't think of anybody right off the top of yeah, my exactly. head. But like, exactly. I mean, there's this. <laughs> no, no <laughs> dude, but you can't tell, you can't tell me though. You can't tell me though that there's not people out there like that, that are modern like have a modern sound that don't know how to do technical, like who don't well, know how multis work. Here's the thing. You know what I'm saying? Like thing. a lot of these guys is like, they're good, but they're all very basic compared to someone who could be really spitting that shit. I, I hear, I hear this. I hear what you're saying, but it doesn't coincide with like what the record is to me at all. Like I hear it and I'm like, wow, this is bad. Like I hear it and I just go, this is awful. Like this is nothing. There is nothing. I know that I'm just going to keep saying this over and over, <laughs> but I hear it and I'm like, damn, like this flow is awkward. It does not mm. sound good. The the bad the lyrics are bad like you know what I'm saying the beats are awful the mixing's bad like everything's bad actually can, <laughs> like, I, can I say to your point can I say to your point I feel like the biggest thing that is turning people off is the flow that he's using right it's a very stop and go staccato type flow and I feel like I didn't even really mind that so much what what mm. what annoyed me and going back to your oh shit there was only one track in this whole song that made me go oh shit even once and that was like home. Because there was some witty wordplay on that one. This album was so goddamn boring. Are you? I just got that air about me like wind chimes. Did not. In no way. You were like, oh, uh, who hasn't no. thought of that rhyme before? Are you serious? No, it just made me. Th- I just made me go. I never said. Oh, they said. Oh, the, that rhyme. That rhyme was used before i was saying that rhyme was awful like that's awful really? that's so bad to me man i'm swimming in the egyptian river because i'm in denial are you fucking kidding me with that 80s sitcom bullshit he sounds like grind time rappers dog like grind time rappers from 2004 i'm gonna i'm gonna get to that shit because here, here's my thing the first 10 tracks i absolutely liked 
No. I really did. And no. I I really can't understand how you guys are not seeing anything in these tracks that are dope. Like, I, I really don't understand how Chloroseptic is just like, you guys just heard that and we're like, nope, absolutely nothing here that was good. Like, seriously? I didn't give a shit about that. Okay, look, here's the thing, right? He, I don't Dude. care about the flow. I don't care about the thing. I don't care about any of this. Eminem mm. apologizing to his wife. I don't fucking care. Eminem for the 15th time being, oh, I wish I was a better dad. I don't fucking care. <laughs> Eminem randomly doing songs like Chloroseptic and there was another song later where, oh, I gotta oh do the song God. pandering to my old, uh, my old school fan base like the violent shit. Don't give a shit. It sounds fucking forced. Are you gonna tell me you like the first 10 tracks you liked Remind Me? Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. I would take Eminem's accents over Eminem talking about, ooh, that booty's so thick, though. Are we really going to listen to Eminem no, sing about no, no, asses no. for two songs and give him okay. a pass? Okay, if you're no going to say fucking, fucking singing about, oh, I don't like Eminem singing about asses, then fucking get the fuck out of here with that ass like that song. Come on now. It was crap. No, but, but no one's talking about. Make my TV no one, go doing, doing, doing. Are you really telling me? Are you really telling me that encore. fucking baby shit, that baby talk, was better than anything he did on here? This is what? no. This is no better. Eminem is older and he's still singing the same shit. Yo, when he says this rap shit got me traveling place to place, you better leave your house because you're always stuck at your pad and stationary. Come That's on. a grind time bar, dog. That's a grind time bar, dude. Like, have you never listened oh, to Daylight? Oh no, Which, because by the way, it's clever. It's bad. Like, I don't understand what your point is. No, dude, it's not. It's not the fact that it's. It's. You keep saying it's clever. I see where you're coming from. I don't know, man. It's just like maybe I'm jaded just from hearing so many like battle raps throughout my years and like being like, okay, like this guy. Everyone praises is like the highest of the highs, the holiest of the holies. And you expect music. him to not spill battle raps? Like, what are you saying? No, I'm saying I expect him to be good. I don't see how you can listen to this record and feel anything but shame. Like, that's what I feel for Eminem. So untouchable. Did Everything. nothing. Did absolutely nothing. That song was so no, fucking sloppy. No. Are you serious? Uh -huh. I, I won't listen to Eminem just shit talk white privilege and a song that's sloppy and weak and didn't stick with me just because he was singing about a topic that i agree with doesn't mean that i'm gonna like the song same with uh walk on water or whatever okay we here's about. the thing like it's all boring dude this song had substance and skill to it and i don't understand how you guys are going like nope hmm, turn up turning up my nose it's the fucking say, presentation like, of it, dude. This like, isn't, this is, I just want to point out, this is not an unpopular, this is not an unpopular opinion that I'm just, that I'm expressing right now. I'm just saying that we, me and Muse aren't like these like fucking like curmudgeons right now. There's a lot of people, like a lot of people who feel the exact same way. And like, I'm sure there's people out there who like it, but I will say, I will say you are the first person that I've come in contact with that I actually take their opinion seriously in music that likes it. Like everyone else is like, so I've argued with like three 15 year old white kids who are like, this is the best <laughs> album. And like, I'm like, stuff. oh, that's whatever. But like, I actually give a fuck what rap critic has to say. You see what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> All right, here, Cause here's my thing. I do have bad things to say about this album, but like the fact that you guys are just like absolutely nothing good is astonishing to me right now. Like, I'm honestly just like, this, because this song, I understand specifically why this song would cause people to want to turn their noses up at it, right? Because he has a prominently white audience, and he is saying to them, guys, fucking listen to what black people are going through, please. I'm trying to show you right now, because you're not going to listen to a black rapper say it, so maybe you'll fucking listen to me say it. And I'm hearing him, like... As he lays this out, not only just saying this message, but also with such fucking dope lyrical skill that your ear wants to hear it for for my money. Now, now let me let me t uh, uh, let me actually say the points where it does fail, right? Specifically, the chorus: "The white boy, white boy, you're a rock star," and then the Cheech and Chong sample. This album has Rick Rubin's fingerprints all over it, right? Uh, let's get this party. Da -da -da -da. Let's start it from scratch. You know that one. That was a cool little. Oh, snap, you're throwing it back. And then it's just like, oh, you're still doing this? You know what I mean? Or it's just like, hmm. But I think part of it is just like, I feel like a lot of people just have this thing where it's just like rap and rock together. No. And it's just like, okay, guys. Eminem using these rock samples always feels so fucking just, it doesn't fit. It doesn't work. 
Him rapping over I Love Rock and Roll was like, ugh. I actually dug that one, and the reason why is because... No. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. I dug that one, and the reason why is because the, the main thing that I like from a lot of songs when they mix uh, use a sample that's so blatant is when they switch it to, to make it about sort of something else in a way. Which song was that one? I love you, because you love me. Like, what? Yeah, it was just I, I like the way it mixed it around. It mixed around the expectation of where you thought the beat was going to make it to make it a different sentence. Yeah, but I think the sentence that they mixed is pretty bad. Like, I love you because you love me. Because <laughs> you remind me of me. I actually think I understand why people don't like this song, partially. Uh, there's the, the rock beat, which people are just like, eh, you know, that's whack. But then... He also does, he apes the Beastie Boys flow again, where he, where he does the side of you, that sort of thing. To be completely, just to, to be completely honest with you, man, I listened to this record like two times front to back, man. And like, it's all it's all a blur at this point, man. It's all a big blur to me. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. so Untouchable didn't stand out in any way to you. No, not even for being it stood bad. Out, it stood out in a way, <laughs> dude. It all it all stood out to me as being bad. All of it. The only one I, the only one that I, there was oh two joints. God. There was two joints that I thought were like acceptable. Not like like a, I would like go out of my way to listen to it, but I kind of like framed just because it was kind of a callback. No. No! How can you that's tell? The dude, the beat, the beat for like, frame, the, the beat on framed is the only like beat that's good on the whole thing, dude. All <laughs> no, the beats oh are God. so bad, dude. What the fuck? They all Christ. sound like pop beats, dog. They all sound like fucking. No, like, oh, oh no, 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 no! Actually, I'm about to, I'm about to go against everything you're saying right now. Like as I'm going through this album, and it's taking me a lot longer because I'm just fucking fucking oh my god right now <laughs> like I, oh my how did you not hear dude maybe we just come from a different cloth because when i heard this motherfucking rap rhyming on untouchable in that third verse it was just like shit that like i have been waiting for a white person to say forever and it's just like Thank you, white person who has an audience to all these well, other white yo, people. I'm not, I'm not arguing. Thing. I'm not you know? arguing that that's not important. I'm not arguing with the substance of the song of what he's saying. Right. I'm, right, ar- right, I'm right. arguing that you don't like the presentation. That I don't. Well, not just yeah. like it's, it's not just like the as simple as the presentation. Like I just think that like do I think that that's important that he said that because he's got young white fans who need to hear that that aren't going to listen to it. Yes, I totally agree. Right, I agree with what he's saying. I just don't think that it's one worded creatively like written creatively i'm not saying that it's not written like oh it's like complex just because something's complex doesn't mean it's good to me you know what i mean like no 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 but that's like a, i just look, don't see how line, i don't fuck see your republican views pull ourselves up by the bootstraps where the fuck are the boots like come on but what that wasn't but my thing is my thing is though it doesn't matter if it's good if it's a it doesn't matter if it's a good bar or not dude because like i'm gonna have to listen to that fucking god awful hook i'm gonna have to listen to that god awful beat i'm gonna have to listen to, like and all the way i have to get all the way to the third verse to get to that shit man like i'm not i'm not going to do that like i'm talking about me bill personally am i going to listen to this record again and enjoy it never like i'm never gonna be like man put revival on i'm really trying to hear this in the whip well i see that's the thing i don't think this is an album for like an album for enjoying <laughs> no no no. i feel like we're on two different levels because y- y'all were like fucking all on brock hampson's balls earlier you know and you were like oh man but it's about you know just how they're what they decided to say this and that's just how they wanted to put it out and he's saying this and you guys are like nah because it's, like, it's because brock Not hampton even. doesn't sound because brock hampton doesn't come off as like contrived dude the whole time was it was like i was just trying to figure out what was going on on this record worth the worth the brock hampton record maybe maybe i'm shallow but i could just put that on and enjoy it like i can listen to the I could, the beat slaps the way everything sounds sounds good the what they're saying i like it you know what i'm saying like it's like there's so many components that i feel like are missing in this record that just it just it adds up to being awful for me and like i'm not i'm not slighting anyone who enjoys this record i'm just confused like i i physically don't understand how someone can hear it and be like this shit slaps like this is good i feel like this album is more cohesive i feel like it has like if you asked me what a track was about i could be like oh yeah that song's about this with most of the brock hampton tracks if you ask hey what's that song about 
I don't fucking know. They just kind of come on and they rap for a while, and then. A but I mean, it's just rap. it's just like about them. It's about them rapping and having fun. That's what it is, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. They're not having fun on that album. A lot of that album is about like fucking the shit that they're going through. Yeah, but I mean, like, it doesn't mean they're not having fun. I mean, like, dude, I rap, I rap about fucking sad shit all the time, and I have fun while I'm doing it. You know what I'm saying? Like, but I feel like I feel like you're on you're on a different sort of uh, you you guys are on a different sort of kick, like right because. And, and this is interesting because I'm, I, I'm, I don't know. I feel like I'm usually not on this side a lot of the times where it's like, okay, that album sounded good and I could just listen to that. And this album doesn't sound like it doesn't, it's not just a breezy listen. You have to pay attention to what he's doing. And I feel like the fact that he's doing something that you have to pay attention to what he's doing is, is being like not rewarded in any capacity. Like uh, you can talk shit about the bad moments because I, I want to get to them too but like no love whatsoever it just feels appalling I just feel like the the, the parts that are bad in my opinion outweigh mm. everything else that is good about it so hard that it's like it's like for example like walking into a room okay. this is how I feel about it like when you walk into a room and someone just took a shit in the back of the room right but over to the side there's this huge pile of shit and it smells real bad. But then over to the side, there's like a small air freshener. Like, yes, you're glad that the air freshener is there, but I'm leaving the room. That's a, that's what you felt about this album. Yes. I listened to this album once because I didn't want to listen to it a second time. Normally, I do at least give it the, the courtesy second time. I was so dreading listening to this thing a second time that I didn't. I, spoiler, I'm giving this a two. Whoa. So like like home like home what was, like home how, how was the one you? track I enjoyed. That's what I was about to fucking say. I was like, okay, come on. Now. I said earlier, like home, like home was the one track where I was like, oh shit, that's fucking clever or whatever. But nineteen tracks and like I'm not seeing the cohesive thing because I said before like you got he's trying to be personal and okay how about this exactly right? You're gonna go from River with Ed Sheeran. <laughs> this made for the exactly fucking radio pop f- top 40 shit to her fucking boobs were popping out and her fucking she, she had a thick <laughs> ass and she fucking kicked me in the balls and I like that <laughs> oh, you said that shit was so <laughs> funny <laughs> some of the shit he said was funny though like come on Dude, no, so it, it was no shit. different dude ah. I, again comparing it to fucking like you just said before with Encore it's the exact same thing as but, no, walking no, no, up to no. Paris Hilton. No, no, no. Funny. It's the same thing as walking Encore up to Paris Hilton funny. and saying, kick, uh, kick me in the balls and rake my eyes. It was the exact same thing. But that wasn't a joke. That was just physically abuse me, and that was it. With this, there are turns of phrase and punchlines that I feel like work. Now, uh, for River, I am completely not with you. That is not a Radio Ready single. A Radio Ready single about fucking abortion. That, that, that's a Radio Ready single to you. There are fucking a lot of controversial topics in fucking top 40 right now. Oh, oh, come on! Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Selena Gomez gonna make a fucking song about abortion. You can't say that you didn't get Ed Sheeran on a song and it not be, try to be, try yeah. to be, it's, it's. It, uh, Who's the number one artist of 2017? Like. Uh, but what I mean is, I, I feel like it was like, oh, wow. Like, this was the first song, you know, in actually ever where I was like, huh, I might actually want to check out Ed Sheeran. None of the songs that he has ever made before have ever made me want to check him out. Not even that fucking white boy rapping shit that he did before that people found endearing. Nothing that he has done so far has endeared me to him except for this fucking song. Because it was just like, whoa, he's actually talking about something and I can actually like feel what he's saying. I feel, I actually feel like I'm connecting to the emotionality that's being put into his fucking voice. He just has an air about him at this point that makes his songs unlikable for Like me. wind chimes. S- so she's been on the web lately. Says maybe she'll be my Gwen Stacy to Spider Man. Come on now, come on now. What Get is the that? Fuck out of here. What is that? What's that? That was no shit. What? That was okay. To spite her man, she's gonna get with me to spite why her man. Why are they all? Why are they all wordplay puns, dude? They're like that's not a. Not everything is a wordplay pun, though, <laughs> dude. That I'm right there, to that spite her man, you. to spite her man. That is literally, Look. that is literally to me, just like grind time. You will see defeat like shoes. <laughs> <laughs> like it's, it's. I don't know. But man. not every I, line is that. 
He said he's coming home with his neck scratch, the catch flags, sweat jackets, and dress slacks mismatch on his breast jacket. He's a sex addict, and she just wants the to exact wrench and get back. It's a chess match. She's on his back like a jetpack. She like, come on. None of this is is endearing to you at all. You're just like, oh, he. How dare he do a punchline? Dude, take that. Take that. What you just said, right? Take those. Put it on a beat that's decent. Take Ed Sheeran off. And then, like, make it produced well and not, like, the vocals fucking popping out the fucking... It sounds like they're, like, clipping and shit. Like, okay, do all that shit, and then I'll listen to it. You see what I'm saying? There's so many I factors. I feel like now, now y'all doing the opposite shit where you're like, oh, just because it sounds pop, it's bad. No, I'm saying if no. it sounds bad, it's bad. It doesn't matter if it sounds yeah. pop, dude. I listen, Man. dude, I We've listen to pop shit all the time. We've been saying that the beginning. It sounds bad. I hate the production on this. I don't okay. mind pop music, God, dog. Like, I, dude, I fucking I love me some to... uptown funk, dog. I'll be listening to that shit in the car. <laughs> I listen to fucking, you know, wow. it doesn't matter, like, what style of music it is. The difference to me is mm. just, like, is it is it well-produced pop music? Is it well-produced pop rap music? You see what I'm saying? Like, is it something that, yeah, 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 is yeah, it something yeah. that like, I personally enjoy? And as a person, I, I don't personally enjoy it. He can say whatever he wants. His wordplay, his puns, whatever. The, these these clever wordplay punchlines. But the package it's in isn't enjoyable. He and you're just is that not all accounts in, for nothing. I, I he feel like as like, a rapper the, on this album is not enjoyable. He has an like air all, about himself that he thinks he's the shit, and it's like, oh, it's fucking Eminem. Everyone's gonna eat this shit up. I thought this is gonna be a more along the lines thing. And I'm trying to get to the parts that I don't like. Y'all motherfuckers won't let me because I'm just busy trying to fucking box, you know, my way out of the fucking corner. Cause, all right, cause the, the first point where I would actually concede to you that I feel like there were cracks in the armor, like most definitely was bad husband. I don't give a shit about the ex ambassadors. The, uh, for, uh, and, and just the way that it, it was it was said, right? How can how come you can be a lord and a loser? But but and then he says like, how can you be a, a good father, a good dad, but a bad husband? Why are you a good father, a great dad? It's just like wait, how? Why do you think you're such a great dad? Like what? <laughs> Isn't there a song later on this very album where he's apologizing for being a shitty dad? <laughs> yeah, it was just like, like what the fuck? Like, I feel like you guys didn't touch base on what this chorus was about. <laughs> <laughs> but see, all right, now, 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 now that we have gotten to track ten, I can actually start agreeing with you, motherfuckers, to a point that I was trying to make. And it is, and you know, what I feel like what happened to you? I feel like what happened to you because you said you've only listened to this album once, right? Yeah. Now. The way the second half of an album can sometimes be way more impactful than the first half because that's the impact that's left with you the latest, right? And to your guys' point, the second half of this album is absolutely either unmixed or un just put together except for the last two tracks, but let's get to that. So Skylar Grey, I feel like she has been a uh maybe one of the worst influences that Eminem has ever had in his life. I actually did like the way the song ended though. Cause it ended like a sort of parallel piece to Love the Way You Lie. Or just like if she ever leaves again, I'ma tie it to this bed and set the house on fire. And this one is literally she's standing there with the rag about to put the lighter to it, light the fucking thing on fire, then she threw it. Which is basically she sets me on fire. Um but it, and sort of like the implications of the, the, the yeah yeah, but I understand not why people don't like it because it's the the epic sounding pop sort of thing that Skylar Gray does that was cool in 2010, but is not aging well, right? And then I don't know what love one of y'all motherfuckers had for Framed, but that shit was whack. That shit was just whack. That was literally 3 a.m. again. I started to get relapse feels. And it started to make my stomach turn a little bit. Uh, Man, but the, hold on now. Hold on now. Let me interject here. No, I'm not, I'm not defending. <laughs> I'm not going to. I'm going to do the closest thing to defending I can do, right? My question is, is you can listen to this one. I can listen to this song, right? And although it is not by any stretch a fire Eminem song to me, right? Like, I don't listen to it and go like, huh. It makes me go, at least this right here was a small break 
from everything else from this record. That's how I felt. It felt one out of place. Like, I don't know why it was there. Right. But I was weirdly glad that it was there because the beat was the only beat that I thought like Eminem sounded comfortable over. Like all the other tracks, even the ones where he was trying, I know he's trying to do something else. Right. I get it. And I, I like, I get that he's trying to do something different. And I just, I just don't think that he sounds comfortable over these, even if he's rapping well, if that makes any sense, like what you were talking about with the the the, the Ed Sheeran joint, and you were giving me that whole little couplet there, like like I just don't think that he feels at home on beats like that, but he feels at home on beats like this, and maybe I'm just a weirdo, but the idea of him rapping on some rapidy rap shit sounds a lot better to me than him having a good topic, but then. It feels so diluted through these like different filters of, oh, we've got pink on here or, oh, we've got the ex ambassadors on here. Oh, we've got this production from Rick Rubin that I don't know why people fucking like like new Rick Rubin. But I haven't like Rick Rubin. I mean, I like Berserk and some of the joints like that, you know, but like I really don't like that production style, especially with Eminem. I feel like Eminem for the last couple of uh, well, last decade has had a problem where we know he's a dope rapper. But what else are you like? We already know that. We know you're the best rapper to fucking do it. But what are you going to do with it? And I felt like with a lot of these tracks, there were actually topics that he was talking about. So it wasn't just, hey, listen to this track because it's dope. It's listen to this track because it's about this. But where with a normal rapper, you know, it would be like, yeah, all right, that's fine. But he's fucking whack. It's like, listen to this topic and it's good. Like if, if we could get Big Pun or Big L, you know, still rapping dope, but like, oh shit, Big Pun is rapping about the type of topics that Immortal Technique was talking about. How is he not doing that before? How is he not doing that? Like, how, how is like, how is Stan not a dope track? How is... No, 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 no. I'm not saying that's not a dope... I'm, I'm talking about, I'm, I'm talking about 20, uh, 2004 to 2014. Right. There was a lot of just him running around in circles talking about his life, but it's just like, I'm sorry, by now I don't care about Haley Jade. I'm sorry, but right by now I don't care about these things. Yeah, no, told I us agree. The yeah. first three albums. And I feel like this is one of the uh, uh, Untouchables, one of the first songs where it's just like, this isn't just about, you know, his life and fame and woe is me, things are so hard. This is, let me use this dope shit that I'm writing that you guys are going to pay attention to because I spit the illest fucking bars. I know how to put these rhymes together and use it you know for an actual purpose maybe it's because if you're talking about something that's that serious right and that you care that much about you wouldn't take the time to be mr clever lyrical you know like yes he took the time in the past eminem in the past had songs like mosh and toy soldiers if we're gonna go back to the fucking mid 2000s where he was able to talk about a serious topic and those songs hold up and I wouldn't say the same about the songs on here, personally. And I don't know if it's because his flow is different or his personality and attitude has changed, but I didn't care for it. Okay, he okay. about had me in a fucking ex- an existential <laughs> crisis. <laughs> Lady, you remind me of my raps on that relapse shit because he got an ass thick as the accents. <laughs> wow. <laughs> heat, back to back, Heat and Offended almost had me just shutting it off. Dude. I almost could not finish it after those two. Can I, can I say this? Uh, I actually really liked Offended. Stop. <laughs> I'm gonna need You're going to eat you my to... turds. Okay. <laughs> Dog, I'm going to need you to... I have this. So... I have this. I just it went to the so store. It was so ridiculous that I was just Dog. like... I, I just bought like a I just bought like a I went to the store right the furniture store and I bought like a couple <laughs> seats I'm gonna need you to take all of them because uh, <laughs> <laughs> just take it, them oh come on bro <laughs> no fucking way oh shit oh shit I forgot like wait no you liked like home so never mind but I, I was just gonna say um oh come on uh, where he's talking to Donald Trump didn't want to piss off your base did you can't denounce the clown cause, can't denounce the clan because they play golf with you you stay on Twitter way to get your hate off Nazi I do not see a way y'all differ and all y'all got a race cards bigot the swastika with your name carved in it should be a trademark because hate's all you played off and you just licked the plate off so I guess it pays to, to feed off chaos so basically you Adolf ate off Hitler, Hitler. Yeah. come on God, dude, when I heard that shit, I was like, oh, shit. Oh, shit. That shit was super sick, but the man, we can't, we can't 
ignore the fact that he rhymed Nazi with Nazi and that that's a criminal cardinal sin in rap music. Are you serious? Oh, 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 rhyming Nazi with Nazi is a criminal rhyme? Is, is, is that the worst thing that's happened other than these motherfuckers rhyming words with themselves and literally not rhyming? In the Bible, it says thou shalt not rhyme Nazi with Nazi or Bacardi with party. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, see you see up the way y'all dismissing this shit. Yeah, see, I, I I I'll say it a million fucking times. Like home was the only track I enjoyed. You can fucking talk its praises all day, and I'll agree with you. But that's not gonna make me like River or make me like fucking offended. I just can't. I'm incapable. Or the fucking stolen cranberries chorus on In Your Head. That was lazy as shit. That that see now. Again, that's where I'll agree with you. That one was lazy because it didn't do anything. All it did was just go, here's that chorus. And it was just like, oh, like, I I don't know. I like things that pop to me. And I feel like there were a lot of moments on here that popped. Like the, the, the offended, that popped to me. It was so weird that it was just like, wow, okay, what the fuck? I it was no. It was fascinating to behold. Just fascinating. Like, what the fuck? Get the fuck out of here! Oh my god! Are you serious? Well, so basically, okay. Have we have we reached the end of this record? Is this have we're at the end yet? This nineteen to fifteen thousand track record. Well, well, th- this is actually my point. This album is an hour and seventeen minutes, and I think we can all agree if your album. Passes the 60 minute mark, it's not gonna be a classic ever. This is not gonna happen. I was just gonna say, you need to be fucking bringing it nonstop and 19 goddamn tracks. You're telling me he couldn't yeah. shave off any of these? You couldn't shave off that one? That song with Pink needed to go. And that was the one with the fucking Egyptian river because I'm in denial. See, the, uh, what to me a bad line is something that is obvious that like. A swimming in an Egyptian river. I heard that. I heard what that punchline was going to be two minutes ago. Like, I fucking already heard that. That's what was corny to me. But that did not happen as many times as I feel like people are trying to say did. When, when, I, when I saw the track list and I saw all the guest features and people were hating on it and being like, man, I am not excited for this fucking album because of the track list. I'm going to tell you straight up. When I downloaded Revival on Spotify and I was getting ready to listen to it, I was not expecting to hate it. Even after seeing this, even seeing the features, I saw Ed Sheeran, I saw Pink, I was actually thinking in my head, I'm interested to see where this goes. And they just didn't impress me at all. Like, I saw Skylar Grey and I rolled my eyes because I'm just fucking over that shit. I saw Alicia Keys and I was shocked by that one and it ended up being the only song I liked. But... Like, if I'm looking at this album cover, right, and I'm seeing Eminem with his head in his hand with a fucking American flag over his face, <laughs> I'm not expecting him to have two songs about hitting on chicks at a bar and talking yeah. about, man, uh, uh, after this album, Haley, I'm going to be home for good. Like, I don't fucking care. You've been talking about this shit for five albums is now. It, is it Haley a grown woman now? I think she is. That song, but see, that, that's the thing. The last two songs, are you telling me, did absolutely nothing for you? Nah. Wow. You you did you can't even respect what he did with the last track I, at all. I fucking checked out, dude. Mentally, I checked out. Dude, the fucking castle song. Okay, first of all, those songs, the, the three verses were supposed to be him writing to her at different points of his life. It wasn't him writing to her when she was 18. It was him writing in 1995 and 1996, and then in 2007 when he had the 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 actual fucking where he uh, uh fucking had to be sent to the hospital right before Christmas. That was what was so fucking jarring about it. And then you have a rose, which is literally sampling the rose, which I thought was kind of dope. Uh, but all right, whatever. But then literally that last song is about him accepting death right at the end and then having that moment where he actually awake like where he actually like awakes and it's like this was a dream this was a dream of me dying and accepting that this you know that my life isn't going to be in my hands anymore and then realizing that i have the 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 struggle in me to fight back and then finally reversing the final the track right before this and going like fuck that and then taking the end of the third verse and then do and then ending in a different way that's fucking clever i i i literally do not understand how you how you guys could be like nope nope wasn't clever that was whack like really 
No love at all for the way he twisted the ending of that song to make it about something else. That didn't at least perk your ears up at all? Like, nothing? On fucking track 19, I couldn't be bothered anymore. Like, you fucked up. Like, I can't look at this album as a solid thing and give it a good review when, like, like we were talking earlier about getting three verses in for a line about, what was it, Boots? That wasn't even all that good? I can't listen for 19 tracks to finally be like, oh, that's the good un. I can't fucking be bothered with that shit. I ain't got time for that. So, I've already given my rating, which was a two. Bill, what would you give this one? Man, don't make me do this. Don't make me do this. <laughs> don't make me do it to him. Okay. <laughs> don't do it to him. <sighs> okay. Let me preface this real quick. All things oh, considered, no. yeah. All things oh, considered, no. my personal enjoyment factor, I'd give it a one. But, like, in terms of, like, is certain parts of it, like, are, are they well done? Like, in terms of, like, technical skill, I'd give it a two. Like, I'd be like, okay, like, there's parts of it. Like, if I were to acknowledge that he's rapping his ass off on, like, three songs... You know what I'm saying? Like, if I would be like, wow, he's rapping his ass off too bad. It has all these other things I don't like about it. I would give it a two. But I can't get past that, so I'm giving it a one. That's like a, if someone says, hey, man, let's put that Eminem record on, I'm going to look at him and be like, leave my house. Like, that's kind of (laughs) how, like, that's where I'm at right now. You know what I'm saying? Mentally. No offense to rap critic. I love you, you know. But if you say that to me in my house, I'll be like, I love you. Thanks for having me on the show. But you got to leave the house you can come back later you can come back later but you gotta leave darren what would you give it like i said i feel like the first nine or so tracks are dope i feel like they're good i feel like they come with a different range of topics and i feel like it still maintains his lyrical skill all throughout but then we get to the second half of the album minus the last two tracks and it becomes gener- the generic eminem that people hate him for at this uh part of his career and so i feel like what happens a lot what people do is they go oh you know these five tracks are bad first nine tracks suck ass too i feel like to, it, it's throwing out the baby with the bathwater to be like this was all whack despite the fact that there was so much skill put into this there were so many varying topics there were so many to me funny moments um now i do actually want to bring up before we go there was a couple of moments, I think it was on that frame song, where he said some shit that was like, that that was literally edited out, where he said, just escape from the state pen for blah, 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 eight women who hate men. And I was like, what the fuck? And, oh, I don't remember uh, that. Did he seriously do that? Yeah, it was on the frame song. And then, oh, no. Oh, God. Where he said, just one spark and it's lit, but I'm going to still get dark on the shit, which is actually kind of dope. But then he says, told you I'd leave my mark on this bitch, War Machine. And I was like, oh. Don't Wait, what's, that. A, what's the reference? I forgot about that. Uh, I don't understand that That was reference. on Nowhere Fast. Uh, War Machine is an MMA fighter who beat up his girlfriend who was a porn star. Oh, oh, I thought he was fucking talking about fucking War Machine, like, from Iron Man. Uh, fucking Iron Man? And I was just like, I was just like, wow, okay, wow, okay, yeah, I never, that puts that into a new context. That makes me like the song a little less, in a sense. Yeah, as you can see, the, so these were the songs that I didn't like as much. Uh, <laughs> but when he did, like, I don't know, there, there's a very delicate balance when it, when it comes to offensive humor, right? It has to be so ridiculous that I'm able to look past how horrible it is. That's how a lot of, like, you know, humor works. You know what I mean? And and Offended, I thought that that actually works. Like, the song is literally saying, I, I'm, I'm going to offend you. When you have something that's just, like, a ridiculous scenario that he's talking about, I feel like Offended works. Because when he talks about, like, he's going to kidnap Ivanka Trump, and it's like, okay, well, I know he's not going to actually do that. But he's just saying all this crazy shit. So you still <laughs> um, haven't given a, a rating. Oh, oh, yeah. So Six. out of five, I'd, I'd give it a four. Is that is that you dropping the headphones and leaving? <sighs> <laughs> to, to be fair, to be fair, you had a very similar response to mine. So I think that's I, I think that's 
I think that's uh, respectable. That does it for this week's episode of the Going Off Podcast. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much to our lovely, lovely friend, Kill Bill, for stopping on in for this rare double album review. Um, really, really tore the house apart. Really brought us together at the end. Thanks for this. This is a real. <laughs> this is a real good discussion, y'all. I really enjoyed it. I, I'm glad that we we had a civil discussion about differing opinions, and uh, uh, y'all y'all come back now. You hear? Fuck Rav Dog. Fuck Square. Fuck Record Dam. Mm. Fuck Ashido Brown. Fuck Data Cat. Fuck everybody in EXO, man. You Ooh. know what I'm saying? And uh, yeah, uh, we'll have to have that rap battle, dog. Uh, if this is your first time listening to the podcast, all of our old episodes are on SoundCloud and iTunes. Just search Going Off Podcast. That's no G. That's G O I N apostrophe off podcast. Follow us on Facebook. <laughs> the O I N podcast. G O I N podcast. So you said no G. G I O A I N. Oh, yeah. Well. The O and Off podcast. I like that. You know what I mean. Uh, follow us on Twitter. <laughs> All of Bill's links are on the screen. Uh, if you're watching us on uh, YouTube, uh, what's your Twitter? I am Kill Bill. I'm Kill Bill, and your sound. I know you're Kill Bill, but what's your Twitter, bro? <laughs> <laughs> did, did you like that? Did you like that? That was Lighten good, up. dude. That was good. <laughs> and, and you're I just right for Eminem. All right. No. <laughs> and, and, and you're Kill Bill on SoundCloud, correct? Yeah, Kill Bill the rapper. And just if you Google Kill Bill the rapper, I'm pretty easy to find. All right, man. So. Well, thank you very, very much for checking us out this week for the Going Off podcast. Until Well, next week is actually going to be a best of 2017 episode, so this might be the last time you hear us until the next year, maybe, unless there's one in between. But either way, next week's episode isn't going to be a new one. It's going to be a best of, like, the funniest moments of 2017. We're compiling those clips now. It's going to be a long one. But until next week for the Going Off podcast, I'm Muse. And I'm the rap critic. And I'm I'm Kill Bill. Is that what I'm supposed to say here? Yeah, go ahead. I'm Kill Bill. I love you guys. <laughs> Thanks for having me on. I love you too, Bill. Mwah. Mwah. Is that, is, is, is that how we're ending? <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> Mwah. Love across America. Wait, wait, wait. Before we go, we have to mention some kind of porn because we talk about porn every time I'm on here. Oh, yeah, that's what right. We, we uh, didn't. I saw a, a video my my girl linked to me. It was like a, a tweet where it was like this girl was having sex with this dude and she was enjoying it so much that she started crying and then he like wiped her tears at the end and it was pretty adorable. So let's talk about that. All right. Y'all have a good one. <laughs>